Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and the subject of today's video newsletter, well we're going to do a follow up to my Be Patient Short Run SPC video from a few weeks ago. I made one follow up which was about large amounts of data, food giveaway etc. Now what we're going to do is we're going to follow it up in exactly the way I discussed it. Small run, small run manufacturing, be patient, let the data tell you how to run the machine. If you just let 30 data points appear, you can save fortunes. So this is effectively short run SPC. Now effectively, the company that inspired me to make the original video I was working on a project with them and I gave them advice. I also gave them a book by Don Wheeler. So by the way, if you want great advice on short run, SPC, Don Wheeler, great book of that, of that name if you, wanna, if you wanna buy a copy. And I said to them, look, all you've gotta do, you're making small batches, but you're constantly adjusting. And by constantly adjusting, you haven't got a clue how capable your machine is and therefore what you're doing is you've got a much bigger defect rate than you actually need to have. Now alongside this project they've done a lot of work to control the process so this isn't just the only thing that they've done but once they've controlled the process I just said to them look make 30 with your hands off and just let 30 data points appear on a graph. Now take a look at this here. So here is a picture of the graph that they produced and you can see look it's just a piece of paper and a pencil. They've done this as far as I'm concerned they've done this exactly right. No technology needed. You don't need to wait for a computer to collect this type of data. Now in the example that you're looking at they actually made the component slightly too small. Now that was because that's where they started and they decided to just take their hands off. Okay, so as you can see, they've not made any defects, but they are on the low side of the tolerance. Now the way I would advise you to do this ongoing is to do this, look. Obviously you've got a tolerance that you want to hit. What I'm saying to you is, set the machine up and take your hands off and see what see what happens and of course what a lot of people say is well yeah but I'm not going to know where I'm going to land we might end up making a lot of defects we can't afford 30 defects therefore we can't do it okay calm down here's what I would say to you take a little bit off the cut so this is a this is a machining this is a machining center take a little bit off the cut so that what you do is you end up getting your 30 data points and they're all too large because what's the only thing I'm interested in? Well I'm only interested in the variability so I'm just interested in the spread here I'm interested in the range because what I want to be able to do is to create control limits either side of the target. So if you work out your control limits and you set them either side of the target, evenly either side of the target, then what you'll get, let's use it, no, let's, let's stay with these colors. You're gonna get control limits that look like this. Either side of the target. Now the fact that I'm up there, it doesn't matter. I can still, place those either side of the of the target region then of course what you can do is you can remachine these and put them back on target and all it's cost you is 30 cycles of the machine that's all it ha hasn't actually cost you the, the expensive components that you're worried about and that's why people won't do these 30 they're worried about making scrap they're worried about losing the part well make the part too big and then use the data to create control limits 
and this is really important these are control limits they are not spec limits and then of course what you can do is ongoing you can use this graph to make sure that you get the process centered and effectively you produce zero defects which is exactly what you should be producing on a machine that's this capable now if you take a look here's the running graph look now they haven't put control limits on this they should have done but they've just given the person the graph with the specs and just by plotting the graph by hand with a very short number of data points you can actually see the process now is centered now they're only going to make about 50 or 100 pieces of this particular component then they'll change it over again so of course they don't have many data points in which to judge whether they're on center or not and that's why you need to give them statistical help if you give them a control chart you turn up the power of each single data point and that's what you need when you haven't got many data points if you just let people decide for themselves and you don't give them graphs and visualization they'll make a complete mess of setting the machine up and they'll produce shed loads of defects by the way before they started doing this this machine made a 10 percent defect rate so don't think that just because the process is capable you won't produce defects so guys short run spc use a pencil and a piece of paper collect 30 get your hands off and collect 30 it'll be the most valuable 30 you've ever collected because at the end of the day even if the 30 were all scrap it's just 30 that are scrap if you don't do this you're going to make the next 10 or 20 thousand with all of this scrap this is cheap at this point because once you've discovered this and you've learned how to set the machine up properly you've learned how to use short run spc properly now you're going to run the process as efficiently as you possibly can and that's what you're always aiming to do isn't it so here are the tools they are simple they are easy to learn they need no technology it is free money you'd be doing this wouldn't you free money if you use short run spc